Did you know that typical solar systems turn off when the grid goes down? Sunlight backup is an industry-leading capability that allows limited electrical loads to continue operating when the grid goes down without battery storage. With Enphase, it's automatic and seamless with most household appliances. This is Danny with Enphase Energy. In this video, I will cover sunlight backup and required equipment. As long as there's adequate daylight and not too many loads connected or on at the same time, a sunlight backup system keeps essential appliances running during a grid outage without the need to install batteries. Aside from a solar array, the equipment needed for an Enphase sunlight backup system is IQ8 microinverters with cabling. They work with or without the grid when the needed additional equipment is present. You'll need an IQ combiner box that has an enclosed IQ gateway with production and consumption CTs, a wireless communications kit, and a cell modem. You'll need an IQ system controller too. This disconnects you from the grid during an outage. Then you'll have the Enphase system shutdown switch for emergency events. For the source circuits, be sure to use hold down kits and compatible breakers in the combiner and system controller. And though IQ load controllers work with all backup equipped site configurations, Enphase requires at least one for sunlight backup sites to help manage and prioritize backup protected circuits. You can install two of these per system. Also, you will need a locally sourced load center used as your sub panel that will serve all of your sunlight backup protected circuits. All right, so what I'm gonna do is step over here and turn off the utility power. And you can see that the grid went down. The utility meter has stopped uh, showing any power getting consumed. And both of my loads or all of my backup protected loads are now up and running, being fed directly by the sun and our IQ8 microinverters in a uh, sunlight backup configuration. I'm going to turn off the PV system to show you that there's no battery storage or other power source being used. The grid's still off as shown by the red lamp being off. So here I'm turning off the PV system and our system's powered down. In the morning when there's enough sunlight, um, a manually configured or always on load would come on as soon as possible. And then scheduled loads would come on as you set it. For example, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. In this case, both loads should return at the same time because it's between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. I'm kind of doing a midday example. It takes several minutes for the system to resume operation and to power your sunlight backup loads. All right, the system has resumed operation. Um, I turn the solar system back on in this case, um, but it will, when the sun resumes or the scheduled time um, begins, the system would resume operating and power your sunlight backup loads. To ensure effective system operation and well-managed expectations, it's important to understand key design principles of sunlight backup. Always design and install the system according to Enphase instructions found in Enphase documents including the quick installation guides and installer technical briefs. Be sure to complete Enphase University online training as well. In the following, we'll review a few key sunlight backup design principles. When sunlight is present, power is provided by the IQ8 PV microinverters. For a better experience for the system owner, Enphase suggests that the total power of your backup protected loads is 30% or less of your PV AC system size. This helps your system turn on and stay on before and after peak sunlight hours each day. Here's an example. If you installed a 15.3 kilowatt PV AC system, you could connect up to 4,600 watts of loads. On the other hand, if you had 12,000 watts or 80% of loads running, 
your system uptime would be more intermittent as clouds come and go. If your loads are 30% of the system size, the system would be more stable and more available much of the year. With a single load controller, you can manage two 240 volt items controlled individually or four 120 volt circuits controlled in pairs of two. If two load controllers are used, that would control four 240 volt items or eight 120 volt circuits in pairs. IQ load controllers are used to control your backup circuits when the grid goes down. Some items can be set to go off when the grid does. Others are operated at a schedule to better match available sunlight sourced solar power. Under conditions when the system collapses due to overload or less sunlight, meaning less power is available, the system will attempt to switch off circuits to keep your priority circuits running. Suggested essential loads are internet hardware, the refrigerator kitchen circuit, a selected lighting circuit, and a garage door or gate if present. It's best to select limited or lower power priority items at each site. Let's review wiring here in an Enphase Training and Development Lab. We'll take a look at it from the roof down. Power output from the microinverters lands in the IQ combiner box. The combined output from here terminates in the PVAC combiner input down here in the IQ system controller. Your backup protected subpanel is fed from the load's output here. Once you've selected your circuits to backup, there's a few details to control these circuits. From the backup protected load center, you will first route the wires to the IQ load controller line in terminals. Then the line out wires head back to the loads. The IQ load controller is powered from a single pole 120 volt breaker located in the backup protected subpanel. This feeds a 24 volt power supply. The IQ system controller is what controls the contactors in each IQ load controller. It does this by switching on and off the 24 volts to each of these contactors. Let's take a quick tour of the Enphase IQ load controller. Here you can see everything included. Inside is a 120 volt to 24 volt transformer. It's fed by a single pole 120 volt breaker located in your backup subpanel. The 120 volt wiring enters here. You can see the line one and the neutral. On the top, you've got the negative wires. It kind of has one negative out and that's split and pre-wired here to both of the contactors. And then the positive circuit actually leaves here and that's going to become your switch leg and notice I've only used a single wire and I'll tell you why because what I've done is I've actually split that positive into two over here right in the IQ system controller and I landed it on NC1 in on the left and NC2 in kind of right there the third screw over. Now it's important that you have separate return wires for each of those contactors. So here, this one's gonna be my NC1 out. Here's NC2 out. And those return back here on each of the contactors. So there's my NC1 positive wire coming back to this contactor. And kind of behind that conductor, here's NC2 control circuit, that 24 volt circuit returning as well. Now currently I have this uh, transformer powered off. You can see I turned the breaker off and I'm gonna show you that the uh, connected loads here are in fact powered or controlled by these contactors. So if I push down on this contactor, that's my first circuit here. I have two contactors so I can control a single 240 volt circuit. And the way I would do that is I'd have a line one here, line two here, in, and then my out line one and my line two would be here. So that's a single 240 volt circuit. Now, if I have two 120 volt circuits, I could use this terminal in here, in here, 
out here, out here, and that would be two separate 120 volt circuits kind of controlled in a pair. And then my second contactor here, that one has the control circuit returning in the same spot. There's the positive. And so the uh, line in from my breaker over here lands here, line out back to that load kind of goes out this way. So I'm gonna power on that transformer and you'll see that the moment I did that, I happen to have it so that the auxiliary controls here, the switch legs are in the on or closed position. And so you'll see that my two circuits are all lit. And just to show you, if I reach over here and I turn off the breakers to these individual circuits, they're still controlled and protected by these individual breakers here as well. If I open or close the 24 volt circuit, that will churn off the contactors. And then now you can control the circuits uh, based on how you commission the system or how you set it up. You can set it up where it's manual, meaning it'll always run whenever it can, when the sunlight backup power is available, or you can set it up to be scheduled and operate um, you know, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., let's say. Commissioning a sunlight backup system is similar to commissioning a PV with battery backup system. In the following, I'll review sunlight backup commissioning details. Launch the installer app. Locate or create the system you are working on. In the Devices section, be sure to add all of the equipment, including at least one IQ load controller. After you've set up the devices and array items and scanned the serial numbers for all the pieces of equipment, locate Site Configuration, where you will set up the additional advanced features, including load control. Select Auxiliary Contact Configuration and configure each of the load control circuits. Note that NC1 and NC2 terminals shown here are located on the second port of the IQ system controller, one over from the left. NO1 and NO2 are on the leftmost connector. NC1 and NC2 connections are used before NO1 and NO2. Select load control. Enter a name for the circuit, such as internet equipment, circuit one. Enphase recommends connecting your internet equipment to the first load control circuit, and then changing the mode of this to manual operation. This will configure this circuit to operate whenever possible, if there is sufficient sunlight available when off grid. All the other loads should be configured to run on a scheduled basis if you want to run them on sunlight backup. This means they could run from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. That's just an example. For the schedule mode, you can change these settings to any time window between 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. to match your local sunrise sunset conditions. It's also possible that you have loads that you only want to run when the grid is up because they consume lots of power, such as a large water pump. For those items, you'd select the basic mode. Be careful to only allow homeowner manual controls override for appropriate loads, then tap save. Now tap the back button and complete the standard commissioning process. Near the end of the process, just before the system functional validation, you will be guided to complete the auxiliary contact validation to test your work. Then, you will test the entire system, including sunlight backup protected circuits. In order to test a sunlight backup system, there must be enough sunlight to power the loads. It's time to complete the auxiliary contact validation tests. When you press the validate, then the yes buttons, the associated contactor will open and the connected circuits with loads will turn off. If item switched off as expected, that means the test passed. Now we'll test the second auxiliary contact circuit. Tap Validate. 
Yes. Wait for the load to turn off. And if it does, your IQ load controller installation and configuration is successful. Soon after completing the auxiliary validation tests, your loads will automatically switch back on. Be sure to allow time for a system to resume operation after items were switched off or for an overload scenario. Educating the homeowner about the capabilities and limitations of a Sunlight Backup system will help them have a good experience. Sunlight Backup is a great way to keep essentials running when the grid is down.